Okay, everyone. Um, on YouTube at the moment, what we're trying to do is um, promote wood turning and promote one another's channels by giving shout outs and mentioning other wood turners out there that do great wood working videos and put up free wood working videos. And I think it's great that everybody gets out there and, and makes these videos and spends the time and puts a lot of effort into them. And all I really want back in return is so, if somebody leaves a comment, that's great. And if I don't really answer them, but I will answer questions if anybody has any questions. Because I get that many comments, I can't keep up. I can't even watch the videos, there's that many. But anyway, I'm going to give a shout out for a, a young lad. He's only 15 years of age and he's a young boat owner and his name is a Adam Collins. And he has a lot of videos there on the, his channel. And I'm going to put a link down below. Subscribe to his channel and check it out. He's made a great video there recently about how he made his own table saw, his own router table. And he just has a little shed in the back garden. And it's great to see young people like this taking up the hobby and taking it up as a professional, even. So, there's a big shout out, shout out. Please go and check him out. He's an Irish young lad, and he, Adam Collins, his name is. Okay. So, today in my video, what I'm going to do is uh, basically, I'm turning two of these bowls here, and there's six sizes. And that's, that's one of them else too. And I do them basically on the same jig as I did with the, the boat balls. The only thing difference in this, I'm going to be torn and two of them together the same. I'm going to torn it and get six sides. I originally started out to be three sides, but I ended up being six. And I originally started this video uh, three weeks ago. <laughs> I should have had them in the rope, but I wasn't well. But I have it done today I just got around to it and I got it finished anyway and there's the I'm not going to be putting an end in this video talking so there's the the finished project you'll be seeing the finished project before the, the video starts okay so uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, please uh, like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't and please like and subscribe to Adam's uh, channel so thanks very much everyone for watching, see you all now, bye. Okay, blanks ready, take them in, put them on the lathe. Okay, blanks in the lathe, ready to rough into shape. Start off nice and slow, nice comfortable speed and away you go. These blanks have to, make, have to be made to a specific size to fit onto my faceplate, my plywood faceplate. The lathe can only do a certain size 
Right, a bit of a turn it outboard to get a maximum out of these bolts, which I might actually do and let them hang over. But with the capacity of the lathe is uh, 14 and a half inches would be the from center, seven and a quarter from there down, which will give you 14 and a half. So I need to make make the two blanks seven and a quarter to fit one on each side of the face plate. Okay, so I might actually turn the lathe and do the, these outboard and make them to try and get the maximum capacity I can out of these ball blanks. Let's see if let's take a nice finishing cut off of this here, just to get it into size. Let's see what size I have here. Okay, blank number two, same again, just rough it into shape. Okay, this one has to be the same as the last one. Next stage, <coughs> you have the index, you have and mark this out into three segmented. Okay, so I'm going to use my index and on the lathe. So you have to divide the blank by three, all, and just transfer the lines all the way around. So I'll just use the lathe for that. You can use a compass for that if you don't have an indexing system. Okay, so it's just divided up by three. Do the exact same with the other blank, and I'll take you on to the next stage then. Measure from the center out to there, half the distance of the blank, and basically just going to screw it in both on both sides and put extra screws in for support. Bring it around and line it up with the index and on the on the wheel, and tighten it down to the first index mark. Okay, I have the two blanks on the face plate and basically I'm just going to start turning them. So I'm just going to start by a rough and cut just to chop the corner, take the corner, sharp corners off. Just stop it there and let you have a look. Now this side here, I have the two of them lined up that you're seen I'm cutting the end grain on the first one the other two will be side grain so I'm getting a pretty coarse cut there now but I'm just going to knock it uh, take take the heavy wood off and then I'll put a nice finishing cut on it Okay, just move the two rests in the position so I can do it. I'm going to do it like a sheared and cut across it here just to get a finish on it. That's the rough and out of the way now. Just shape it with a sheared and cut. So we're nearly there now, it's just coming up nice finish there now on it. Getting a nice finish off that tool there. A little bit of tear out on that piece. <coughs> That's there. <coughs> just walked that a little bit there now. Now, believe it or not, this piece is in the lathe here now three weeks. I'm being away. I was in bed sick for the last three weeks. So I'm just getting back out here today to this. And there was a crack across here. I just felt it with CA glue there. 
I put a bit of sawdust in it. I did put a plastic bag over over the to stop it from drying out out here. So I don't know what's if it's it's probably out of shape a bit. But anyway, I'm just trying to get back into this wood turning and being out knocked out knocked for seven or was it was in an awful bad way. So I'll just pick up where I left off and hopefully things will go to plan. So where I was was <laughs> I was sheer scraping the side of this here just to get it nice. Uh, there's a fairly uh, well looking at it now since I was last on it's just a little bit of tear on it there. And the sheer scraping seems to be doing okay. The grain is all opened up here now on the end. So I'm just going to carry on a little bit of sheer scraping, and there's a few little bumps on it. And I'll sort them out now. So well, here we go. I'll just pick up where I left off. Now I've taken it down to that stage there, and I'm, I'm not making a little template there as well. So when I do move around, I'll be able to do the next two the same. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sand that, and no fin. I'm not putting finish on it now. I'm basically just going to start off at uh, 120 and finish it up at 3, 320. I'd say probably be the finish, and I do the same there. You can see where there was a crack there, filter with super glue and some sawdust. So basically to sand this and then I'm going to undo the screws, leave the center screw in it and turn it around onto the next one. Okay, basically I've moved the blank onto number two. You can see number two and it's just basically on the face plate which where I have to cross, I just have it lined up with number two. And that's had to be in sanded and finished. So moving on to number two, I'm going to take a rough and cut basically down to that mark that I have here and down to this mark. And then I'm going to use a sheared and cut to finish it. Okay, what's happening here now is I'm ending up with me point here from me three sides, but I'm ending up with a flat in here. And the only way to get rid of that is actually take more off of this side here around. But I don't really want to do that because I'm going to make it end up making the ball smaller. So I'll actually, I think I'll leave this little flat piece here. And it'll have one, two, three. Just to see, I'm going to play by just see what happens. And I'm actually going to do this here, finish it, turn it, and do the next one and finish it. Just to see what it's like. If I have to, I can turn it around again and take that off. I could actually make six sides out of this, probably. One, two, three, four. Five, six sided ball. But well, okay, we we'll leave it at that. I'm gonna just keep going and see what happens. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, so sand this up now. That's number two done, and move around to number three. So I've moved the blanks on the face plate again, and I've moved them onto this index number three. And I'm just going to start 
knocking the, the corners off from that mark there back to the edge that's me mark basically from the edge of the plywood to there and I'll just stir it out nice and slow and taste nice nice slow cuts and take the edge off and then I'll finish up the shooting Okay, just gonna <coughs> clean this up now with a sheared and cut. Okay, that's that one done now, and I'm gonna sand this and then turn it again. Okay, so that's one, two, three. Okay. Okay, I moved the blank again and basi basically this one is going to be not see the way I took an awful lot off on this side this one's only going to be from here to there so it's only a small amount coming off the tip of this one so it's going to have this bowl is going to have six sides but you can do it in a way that you have three or six you can do whatever you can have n uh, 9, 12, all different sizes, but I'm going to go with uh, 6 sides, so I'm going to be moving it 3 more times, so I'll quickly do this one, and then turn it again, quickly do this one, and then quickly do this one, and then the bowl is ready for the uh, tenant and hollow one out, okay? Okay, so that's it on to there now, ready to sand again. I'm going to sand this up, move her on to the next one. So we have three more moves, so the six in total. And it's trying to follow that pattern that I have there, seems to be okay. So I'll sand this up, move the jig on to the next one, and take this from there. Moving along again on side number five, this is the fifth side. One more to do will be a six sided bow. So I'm just going to start here, take the corners out with some rough and cuts, and then bring it into shape with a nice shared and cut. Okay. Okay, that's side number five, ready for sanding. Just going to sand that up and move her on to number six. Now we'll just move this in a bit closer here. This is the last side here, this one here. And the way I was lining up the last side, I had no pencil mark, but I was lining up. See this little point that I have here? I was lining that up with the line on the faceplate, on the plywood faceplate that I have here on the on the cross. Right, and I'm getting uh, sides that are exactly the same. So I'm getting six sides. This bowl was meant to be three sided, but I was ending up with this flat spot. In order to get rid of that flat spot, I'd have to make the bowl smaller and bring it out. But anyway, I think it looks nice with six. I'm going to do a three-sided one as well. But we're going to go with the six. Keep at it. One more side to do, and then I'll move on to the next stage.
Okay, that's ready for sanding now. Just sand that up now and I'll take it on to the next stage. I'll be putting a tenant on the end of it, or a spigot, and hollowing it out. Now, I'm just going to put a, a tenant on the end of it, on the end of the blank here. So I can hold it with me chuck and hollow out the inside. And I'll just attack that now with a, with a ball gouge. Speed there is going to be crazy. Now there's my tenants ready to go on the chuck. Okay, I have the bowl in the <coughs> in the chuck and I'm just gonna start hollowing it out. But the first thing I want to do is true up the face of it here, get a nice straight flat face on it, and just define where I'm gonna have the rim of the bowl. I'll put a pencil line to where I run up the rim. So I'm just gonna use it. Five eight ball gauge. And so line to us roughly there and have it just to see what it's like. Go back a bit more. I'd say I wanted about ten mil. Leave a flat at that and then I'm going to bring it in on the second line. Okay, and I'm going to hollow it out and I'm just going to use a 5 8 or a 10 mil bow gouge and basically just use the right hand side of the, of the gouge, go in there on the right and start at the center here and just lean it over on the right and take cuts from. Put it in and around. Using the right hand side of the gouge. So it's a rough and cut. I just want to check my depth, have a little piece of timber here and I have this little, it's just basically a, an aerial or it's a magnetic tip on it and I just pour it in a piece of wood and that'll just check that. I'm going to put it there, I can open it out to what, to what depth I want to keep the ball so just there's me mark, I want to keep it about 10 mil. There you go, that's much more I want to go. Another push with the with the gouge. I'm basically just going to bring this in at an angle and then bring it, sweep it down and in. Just as it is, I'm not going to go too much. I'm going to just take it from that pencil line and then sweep it into the center. Check that. That's it. Spot on. Okay. 
ready for sanding now. So the sand that up, uh, put her on a jam chuck and take the tenons off the base of it. Okay, I'll just put a bit of tissue over the waste block there I have in the chuck. Just to protect the inside. I have a vacuum uh, system that I made up of it. I just couldn't be bothered setting her up to be honest with you. I always use this method, I find it quicker. I just make sure the bowl is lining up. Okay, I have it nicely lined up there now, and I'm just going to use a, a bowl gouge. I already have a concave in the bottom when I was making the tenant, so all I have to do is take this, the tenant off, the spigot, just get rid of that. Now I'll just sand the bottom of that now with a on the lathe there and I'm gonna put some finish on it. Okay, so that'll be the next stage. And I'll show you the finished art piece now when it's when it's sanded and finished put on it. 